Hi, welcome back to my social media. I should probably welcome myself back because it's been quite some time since I popped my head up on screen to say anything. There's a new video coming up on the main channel, Science is Dope. There's a link down in the description. I would really appreciate if you go there and subscribe because I put a lot of effort into those videos. And since those take a lot of time, they're not going to be as frequent. Uh, so I thought I should make little vlogs like these where I talk about random thoughts hopping around in my head uh, in an effort to stay relevant. So yeah, that's what this is. Hopefully I'll do these more frequently. Now that brings me to what I want to talk about in this video. When you're like me and binge watching YouTube for more hours in a day than humanly possible is a regular thing for you, you come across a lot of stuff that set these loops of thought rolling around in your head. And sometimes those loops resolve themselves and give you content for a video. So that's what this is. The other day I was watching this one video where Richard Dawkins is, was in conversation with Neil deGrasse Tyson and the two, I link that video down below, probably about a minute into that video, the two talk about how there's this unwarranted pride in being bad at math and science. And they're right, you quite often hear people saying things like, math, I was never good at it, or physics, I hated that subject. But the two go on to say how you would never hear someone proudly proclaim how unfamiliar they are with the works of Shakespeare. And they are right to some extent. Now, although they don't really discuss why they think that is, why people tend to be bad at science and math, I thought about it. And I think I may have come up with an answer. So that's what this video is about that answer and what we can learn from that answer to learn complex concepts more easily and efficiently. Now, before I get into how, I must say that I am by no means an expert on the subject. Whatever I am about to say is based on my own learnings and understandings from working in the field of education for the last couple of years. Human brains are extremely interesting things. We are constantly seeking out things to engage ourselves with. That's why we love solving puzzles. That's why we tend to get bored easily. That's why boredom is such a painful emotion that we would do almost anything to avoid. Children are probably the best example for this. You've seen how children are constantly curious about everything that's happening around them. Their little brains are trying to gather as much information as possible and try and learn everything. They're constantly all like, Mom, what's this? Mom, why is that? Dad, where do babies come from? You get the idea. Their little brains are just really good at keeping themselves from getting bored by constantly engaging with everything around them. Now, as we grow up, we kind of suppress this part of us because we know how annoying it can get to everyone around us. But we do have this predisposition to not get bored. We want to constantly engage ourselves. That's a natural thing for our human brains. That's my first point. Our brains are constantly seeking engagement and when we're engaged with something, we can just sit on it for hours. Next, why are some things difficult to learn? One reason is definitely that they are at the end of a lot of other things. A good friend of mine used to use this example. He used to say how if you want to learn and understand and appreciate poetry, maybe that expects you to know something about drama. And maybe that expects you to know something about words. Similarly in math, if you want to learn calculus, you have to first learn your algebra. And before that, you have to learn your arithmetic. So in this manner, something being far ahead is often just confused with it being difficult when that is just not the case. So that's my second point. Far ahead should not be confused with difficult. Now, learning anything is simply the process of traversing the steps before it. And when you're not able to understand something, your brain stops being able to engage with it. Learning becomes a task. You are just constantly fighting your own urge to just rather do something else that's less boring. So how do you stop this from happening? Well, when you're not able to understand something, 
like i said before it's rarely because that thing is difficult and it's often because that thing is just too far ahead and all you have to do is just step back a couple of steps and move back ahead this time letting your childlike curiosity build logically step by step upwards for you that's it what do i mean by that let's go back to that curious child example when you get a chance try to notice how children ask questions it's almost always like this papa can you play outside no why because it's five o'clock in the morning it's too early why the sun hasn't come up yet <laughs> why well the earth goes around and when it turns a certain amount the sun shows on the horizon now although that video was probably exaggerated for comedic effect that video sums up how children always try to learn they start at one place and their curiosity builds up for them logically step by step now if we try and do exactly this when we learn try to build logically step by step connecting every small step we notice that we learn a lot more thoroughly and you'll find that you'll automatically do this when you're curious about what comes next not only will you learn more thoroughly you will remain engaged with what you're learning and whatever you're learning will never get boring for you that's it that's my third point when you're not able to understand something step back a couple of steps and move forward by letting your curiosity build upwards for you logically step by step that way you don't lose engagement so to summarize three points one your brains are naturally seeking engagement all the time two things are not always difficult they're sometimes just too far ahead and three when you're not able to understand something all you have to do is step back and move forward by letting your curiosity build upwards for you logically step by step that way you don't lose engagement that way things don't become boring now you might be wondering this guy is just saying obvious shit you just need common sense to understand these basics and you're absolutely right these are just basic things but it's appalling how often we tend to forget them our education system for example is really bad at this they let students move up grades when they haven't understood a subject thoroughly enough you just need passing marks to move up a certain grade this would lead to incomplete understanding and that would lead to uh, improper engagement and students end up hating a certain subject and just don't learn in school that's what happens at least that's what i think happens uh, if you think differently if you disagree with me or whatever let me know in the comments below let's have a discussion and yeah that's about it of course i must say that whatever i've said cannot be applied blindly to every situation uh, it doesn't work sometimes for example when something is actually difficult it just doesn't work but for most academic learning whatever i've said is useful that's it if you want to see more content like this uh, be sure to subscribe but definitely be sure to subscribe to sciences do that's the main channel uh, i will see you all again for another one of these or on the main channel sciences do goodbye